But that's earth. Yes. Boom, shot his ass in the shoulder, he went back up, threw it back up, boom, boom, and he fell, and then, just like that, boom, he made a uh noise, and I shot the bitch in the head, because I'm a real motherfucker, that's why. Don't play with me. When police arrested 23-year-old Nicholas Nering and 25-year-old Gerald Lovelace, all they knew for sure was that both were in Nick's red pickup truck as it tore away from a convenience store in Pensacola, Florida. In a nearby car park, 26-year-old Joseph Ross lay alone, bleeding to death from four gunshot wounds. We pulled in to stop and this red Dodge comes down the side of the building and circles around us and goes behind the building, and that's when I heard the gunshots. Right as we were driving up, I heard pop, pop, pop like that, and I saw a truck. It just took off very quickly, and I thought, something's going down there. And it seemed like it was kind of red over white. And then it was just like bam, 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 and he was laying on the ground shot, and I saw a red truck flying out of the parking lot. The culprits weren't exactly subtle. It took just five hours to trace a clumsy trail of witnesses and surveillance footage back to Nick's home, where authorities ambushed him and Gerald as they peeled out of Nick's driveway. By 2 a.m. on January 12, 2015, both suspects are under arrest, but neither is eager to spill out what they did that day or where they're hurrying to in the small hours of a Monday morning. Isolated in separate interrogation rooms, neither Gerald nor Nick know what police will learn from their accomplice. Sergeants Daniel Harnett and Amy Parsons must arrange a scenario where confession maximizes self-interest, where throwing their partner under the bus is more appealing than surrendering control of the narrative. The detectives have a long night ahead of them. Harnett's tactics may seem unconventional, even crude at times. You're an armed drug dealer. How would you define it? How would you classify yourself? A huh? pharmaceutical entrepreneur? You're the bad guy. But over the course of a few hours, he'll master playing these suspects against each other. Now, you can choose to say nothing, and I'll just go with what they say. Or you can kind of fill me in on what was going on. I mean, you're not a bad guy. Everything Gerald says becomes a tool to use against Nick and paranoia compounds as each suspect wonders if their partner truly has their back. All right, Gerald, we are doing an investigation. Do you have any idea what this is about? No, sir. No. Okay, well, I'm going to explain to you. Okay, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. <coughs> Gerald, where are you living? You just moved in? Yes, sir. You know, me and my fiance. So when do you get married? Probably this year. Probably this year? Yes, sir. How long have you been seeing her for? Three years. Cool. Even before the Miranda warning, Harnett sows the seeds of his primary tactics. The handcuffs before Gerald are a visual reminder of the stakes, a threat Harnett will doggedly reinforce. And in these early rapport-building questions, the detective identifies a weak spot that being in the cuffs would spoil Gerald's upcoming wedding. Gerald, we are doing an investigation into something that's going on. Okay. It happened tonight. Um, and I, I'll, I'll explain it to you, and I'd like to talk to you about it, um, and maybe we can come to some sort of understanding, okay? okay. Now, because it's a criminal investigation, I'm going to read you your rights, all right? You have the right to remain silent, you understand? <laughs> Sign right there, say you understand your rights. You work anywhere? Landscaping. How do you know the guy that you were in the car with? Nick, I know Nick through school. How close are you guys? Gerald must hope Nick never sees this interview. Considering they're chummy enough for a random errand date earlier that evening, this downplay would hurt Nick's feelings, to say the least. So you were saying that he called you tonight and you went and you said you needed what? Hey, he called me. Well, he came to my house, picked me up. Okay. And said that he needed help getting something from his house. So we went to his house, left, and then he all pulled up. What time did he pick you up from your house? Pick me up. It's close to 11 because my wife got off work at 10.30. Gerald's had a casual, if not tired, attitude so far, so we probably don't even need to point out how noticeable this pause is. It won't surprise you to know this hesitation stems from a lie. Nick didn't first pick Gerald up at 11pm, and Gerald is desperate to hide that they spent a lot more time together. 
His clumsy cover-up borders on laughable. Did you talk to him before that? I talked to him. I talked to him before that. Okay. Were you with him earlier today? No, sir. He told me because he told me to bring him. He told me to bring him his truck. Bring him his truck. Did you have his truck? Okay. So you had his truck earlier. Yes, sir. Have you had it all day? Hmm. Not all day. I had it earlier, earlier during the day. It was still daylight. Okay. It was still daylight. So you get, what time would you say that that was? Mm. Four-ish, four almost five-ish. Right, but don't forget. Okay. I mean, how did you, where did no, you get I, it? Well, the, he let me keep the truck overnight. So you've had, so it, I, I've you've had, had it for a whole day? I had it since last night, and I used it this morning to this evening. Around four or five, and he got his truck back. Okay. Around four or five. No. He came by eleven. He got the truck back, and you went and you oh, went. Look, I took him his truck. I took him his truck. He dropped me off, and then called me saying that he needed help with something to pick something up from his house. Now, like I said, I'm doing the math. Now you've explained to me the chain of events tonight with the truck, and yes, you sir. gave three different stories. All right. Yes, sir. You know why? Do you know why? Because you don't want to tell me the truth. I'm being honest. You're not being honest because you said three totally different things. But I'm not upset about that. No, I mean. I understand. I understand what's going on. With six words and a flick of his finger, Harnett strikes a tenuous balance between authority and rapport. While his hands quieten excuses and denials, his words make it clear there's still room for Gerald to make the right decision, to side with and support the authorities. But the problem is, is that if you're going to be on team I don't know with him, then you're going to hold some of the responsibility about what happened. Okay. And there's nothing I can do about that. And if you want to piss away your life, piss it away. Now, I know you were there because you were seen there. There's plenty of people who called. All witnesses, save for one who was reportedly intoxicated, reported that the driver was black and the shooter was white. But Gerald could be anywhere from completely in the dark to the mastermind who bid Nick pull the trigger. To truly understand what happened, Harnett must quash either suspect's desire to protect the other. So his focus turns to carving a rift between them. But you better start telling me what happened, otherwise you're going to have this come down, hit you in the head like a ton of bricks. And you're not going to be able to explain it later. I know what happened. She knows what happened. You know what happened. But if you're going to be dishonest, that means you're trying to help him. And you can't. Did you shoot that guy? No, I didn't. No. Who did? Who I shot him? I didn't shoot him. Who shot him? You were in the truck. Gerald, shoot him in. Who shot him? We all know. Huh? What's that? He did, I didn't. Who's he? What's his name? Gerald. I'm not I'm not this isn't something where you need to play games with me. I'm not, I'm just, I'm What's Nick. his name? Nick. Nick what? Do you want to defend him and be on his team? I don't know his last name. Nicholas. Okay, the guy that was in the truck with you. Nicholas. The guy that was in the truck with you. Yes, sir. I mean, I didn't. I mean, I didn't know what was going on when we when we got there. I didn't know this shit was going on until. Okay. And so until so he goes. Did you guys pull behind the store? Were you driving? I was going home. Okay. Were you driving he the said truck? Stop. You were driving the truck. So he said stop, and you stop, mm -hmm. right? If you try and slant this, you're going to fuck yourself. Okay. Stop it, okay? I'm gonna try and help you as best as I can. Yes, All right, explain what happened. Where where did you stop the truck at? He said stop this behind the store. What happened when you stopped the truck? 
when I got behind the store, they walked up and man, he did he get out of the truck? Nick didn't get out of the truck. Mm -mm. He shot him, man. With what? It, it just it happened so quick, man. I didn't know this shit was gonna happen. Okay. It happened so. Quick. What did he say when the guy walked up? Nothing. Well, what did the other guy say? No, it. He was trying to say something, but it couldn't. So it was right from the get go. Yeah. Although Gerald has completely thrown Nick under the bus, Harnett knows that parts of his story still don't make sense. The obvious change of pace in Gerald's speech could mean he's closer to the truth, so the detective must make full use of his suspect's newfound candor. She asked me what's wrong, I was just like... What did you tell her? I just told her something bad happened. I was like, I don't know. And she, she was mad at me. She, she was like, thought I shot somebody. And I was like, no. I was like, yeah. okay. So she comes to the conclusion to think that you shot somebody because you. Because I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell her. She was like, did you shoot someone? I'm like, no. Why would she even guess that? What did you tell her happened? I love me, me and her. Let's just say, let's just say that she's my fiance. Something horrible happened today. Would you jump to the conclusion that I had shot someone? Mm, no, I'd want to know what happened. But would you come to that conclusion right away? What would make you come to the hold on? What would make you come to the conclusion that I had shot somebody? Maybe if you said something about somebody being shot. That would make perfect sense, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be unreasonable, nor something we could really hold against Gerald if he's lying to protect his fiance from being dragged into all this. There's no reason for him to lie about what she knows. Entertaining as the call-out may be, it's not worth Harnett's time to dwell here. Joseph Ross was killed at around 8 p.m. Gerald's story so far is that they sped off from the scene, stopped at a shell for fuel, then stopped for cigarettes at a store on Blackwell Lane that turned out to be closed. Gerald was then dropped off at his home in the Tory apartment complex just before 10.30 p.m. Depending on how long they stayed at each stop, this entire journey could take, at most, 30 minutes. If Gerald didn't get home until around 10.30 p.m., our very generous transit time still leaves two hours unaccounted for. Here's home. Okay. You aren't there. Okay? You don't get there till 10.30. Bang bang shooting happens at 8 o'clock. Where are you with him in the truck between 8 o'clock and 10 30? My sister got there? You're not home! After, I'm telling you, after that. You're, you can I, tell me you're on the fucking moon. Doesn't mean you're on the fucking moon. Perhaps Gerald's hesitation stems from the fact he helped Nick move some furniture later that same night. Surely even Gerald sees the absurdity of getting back in the car with a man who just shot someone to death without even giving him a heads up. Somehow, after all the trauma and fear Nick has hauled him through, Gerald is still torn between protecting himself or his friend. New information has slowed to a trickle. So as Harnett shifts his attention to Nick, we have the chance to see how Gerald's admissions will impact his friend's fate. By now, it's almost 3 a.m., and Nick has been left to wonder for hours just how loyal his accomplice really is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nick, right? Yes, sir. Doing oh, well. I'm Detective Harnett. This is Detective Parsons. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to sleep. That's Athens. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have any idea what this is about? Mm, no, I don't know. It's um, gunpoint, got on the car, got out of the car. Yeah, but do you know what? Anything that you, do you have an idea what led up to that? No, you ever been trolled before? No, absolutely not. <clears throat> now, when you were stopped, you had a couple of guns on you? Mm hmm. Do you have a permit? Mm hmm. Where's that? It's in my wallet. It's in your wallet? 
What kind of permit is it? It's a CCW. I had all of them on me. I was getting ready for the guard tomorrow. I was going to go to shooting range. And I was putting them all away. I just put, turned the corner. And the lights went on. Okay. I have too many on my Well, I'm going to explain to you what this is all about. Mm-hmm. All right. Where Gerald had the visual threat of handcuffs, Nick is physically chained to the table. Gerald has verified witness statements that Nick was the shooter, and Harnett knows the man before him owns both the getaway vehicle and the hoard of guns stowed inside. It's in their best interest for investigators to restrain this potentially violent man, physically by the cuffs and mentally by Harnett. Is everybody okay? Are you allowed to tell me that? Yeah, he's, he's okay. Now, I am conducting a criminal investigation, okay? So you do have, let me go through this and I'll explain what's happening, okay? If you have any questions, you feel free to ask. You do have the right to remain silent, do you understand that? Mm-hmm. Anything you say can be used against you in court, do you understand that? Mm-hmm. This is not admission of guilt, it just says you understand those rights. Is that right there? How old are you? 23. So do you work anywhere now? No, I'm currently employed. When's the last time you worked? Hot spot, or a few about. Chase for a while now. Okay. Well, how much money do you make in Social Security? Six hundred maybe. A month? Yeah, six thirty-eight. While we're here, we're investigating something that happened earlier tonight, and we're wondering if you could tell us what happened tonight mm-hmm. with you. At midnight, um, I was at home for the longest time. Uh, my friend come pick me up for a while. What time did you pick you up? Um, five something. I was awake. He comes pick you up at five o'clock. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, I was like, it was five. And then where'd y'all go? So riding around doing stuff. I had to go get do different shit for sisters like that. Okay, what car were you guys in? Pontiac Grand Prix. Okay. Um, where'd you go after you did the errands? Here and there. I mean, back, what, run about back to his wife's house. Is that another? I mean, what okay. time did you get back to his house? Let's see what time did y'all get me. It was like one something, right? What time is it now? I'm sorry, I don't know. I, like I said, I just want to sleep. I don't know. It's about three right now. About three. Ooh. How long before we pull up to your house did? Shortly. It wasn't that long. We just got back on the side of town. Okay, where had you been out earlier? A warranting over there. Warranting over there? Why were we warranting or somebody got That's his family. So you're at his family's house? Yeah, around there and his family is all different kind of people we want to see. Okay, well who who did y'all see? Nobody in particular. That's just where you go to hang out and stuff. So you hang out with somebody? <laughs> no, we just drove around. You just drove around? Pretty much. Is there any reason that your truck would have been at the CVS around the corner from his house tonight? No. It shouldn't have been. Then how was it there? I don't know. The reason that it was there Mm -hmm. is because something happened there. Okay? Mm-hmm. The reason something happened there is because of an altercation, I guess, of sorts. And you're kind of tap dancing around it. But ultimately, let's just say for the sake of argument, that we know the result of what happened. Mm-hmm. Now, how that came about, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And who can answer that? Well, one of the people that can answer that would be, would be yourself. Now, you can choose... To be deceptive, all you want. Harnett has presented Nick with the same choice he gave Gerald. You can lie, or you can aid in the investigation. But this doesn't do much to hamper Nick's fighting spirit. He's leaning in, nodding, reading as both engaged and aggressive. Harnett keeps his voice low to show this intimidation isn't working, and will dictate how and when Nick speaks, just as he did with Gerald. Okay. I have never seen you on the side of town. Me, the point okay. about the, this, this thing is this, is that you were there because, A, your truck's on video being there. People wrote down the tag number of your truck there. Okay? Mm-hmm. Which, can you explain that? Mm, no, the truck shouldn't have been there. 
Wasn't my possession. It was there. Wasn't my possession line. But you were there. I wasn't there. Yeah, you weren't. How do you know that? Video cameras? Did you see me in my vehicle? You're kind of distinct. Nick verbally and visibly freezes. This may be purely out of fear, but Nick will soon prove he has a strong grasp of the legal system and a surprising awareness of Harnett's manipulation. His pause could stem from an attempt to gauge if Harnett is bluffing, because remember, police are permitted to lie in an interrogation, whether about evidence or the moral stature of a suspect. Tell me what was going on. I mean, you're not a bad guy. I haven't done nothing. I don't know what's going on. You're not a bad guy. You don't have like an extensive criminal history. I'm sure you may do some stupid stuff. Maybe you don't have, you haven't made the best decisions in the world, but you're not somebody that we would classify as, well, public enemy number one type guy. No, I'm not. I mean, I stay at home with Social Security. I don't know. Okay. So, and I understand that. You have some issues, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. The same tactics might not work as well as they did on Gerald. It's slowly dawning on Harnett that Nick isn't nearly as swayed by emotional appeals. At the risk of spoiling things, he is a bad guy. And Harnett isn't the only one capable of lies and bluffs. You had three guns on you tonight. Yeah, one person, yeah. You fired any of them tonight? No. Any of them get fired tonight? No, those. Are no, those. The most recent one that probably could have been fired was either the 25 or the 38 or 4 inch. Right, well, I pulled slugs out of a person. Yeah, you can ballistic them all. Okay. Is there anything that's going to come back to any of your guns? Uh, no. No? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, let's just say, for example, that maybe it's not one of the three that you had on you. It doesn't alleviate the fact that you were there when shots are fired. And I'd like to know what your role is there, and I'd like to know why you're telling me you weren't there. Why would you say that you're not there? Was I driving? No. No what? No. Who was the driver? Him. How did you know that, if he was? Dude, I'm not. Look, no, no, no I want, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. What Dude, you, me stop. I want to know what all he said. That's it. Okay, I, I know you do. Okay, I know you do. But you're, you're, you want to play a game that I, I'm not going to play with you. Hey, what do you want? Just, play just stop. Harnett's power lies in how he's arranged the situation. Nick isn't hiding the fact he wants to figure out what the police know, what Gerald has told them, and what can be held against him. But that's the whole point of a single detective leading both interrogations. Nick must feel around in the dark while Harnett lays traps that his suspect can't even see. What do you want just, to just stop. Just stop. Just listen to me a second, okay? You were involved in something tonight at that location, and I'd like to hear your side of what happened there. Right, I've heard no heard bullshit. Heard that. What's that? You want no bullshit? No bullshit. All right, that's on serve. He come up, he grabbed his pants, pull in the back, like he's pulling something out. I popped his bitch ass. Okay, serving what? That don't matter. What do you mean? There's, there's, some, pills. there's some pills. What did he do that frightened you? He just, he's always said, I'll rob your bitch ass, I'll, you're a fucking lick. He sent me messages, said nothing else. I was like, okay, whatever, I was gonna serve him real quick and leave. And he acted all fucking squirrely and popped his ass. Until now, Nick has denied he was even at the scene. But after Harnett raised his hackles over Gerald being the driver, Nick felt cornered enough to pivot, and the detective wins confirmation that his suspect pulled the trigger. Nick knows he needs to fortify his self-defense claim, and sows the seeds of a history of violent threats from Joe. He had to all fucking squirt on him and his ass. Now, you were talking about meeting him there, right? You guys were talking back and forth on the phone. Yeah, I told him to meet him around the corner because apparently his dad don't want to come to his house or some shit is what his brother said. Mm -hmm. John? Yeah. Okay. So, you decided to meet him over there? Mm-hmm. Was that your decision or his decision? Who's mine? 
Um, who? The, who decided to meet over the at other the partner? corner store? Yeah, I did. So you decided to meet him at the corner store? At the corner store. Yeah, I was right around the corner talking to him. I was so funny. <coughs> this past corner store hit me right there. Okay, so you go over there, sir. What yeah. were you going to sell him? Just some value. Some value? Was that the, what you had on you when we stopped yeah. it? And that's how you make ends meet between the $600. Because that ain't going to get you very far, right? Not really like that, no. Okay, so you're going over the server. So you drive behind, actually, you guys drive behind the store, right? And let's go to this. Are you driving or is someone else driving? Hmm. Who's driving the truck? I can't say on that one. Were you confused? I mean, I'm not going to put someone in the place that, you know what I mean, for accessory after a fact, nothing like that. Nick tosses around specific legal jargon, the first real hint that he understands the kinds of charges he and Gerald are vulnerable to. But this is overshadowed by his puzzling refusal to admit Gerald was the driver, even after Harnett has revealed he knows as much. In Nick's mind, the difference between hearing Gerald was the driver and saying he was is that the latter makes you a snitch, a label that can have deadly consequences. He says he was driving the truck. Well, he was driving the damn truck then. Well, I'm asking That's, you. I mean, I didn't want to. This I isn't want, the game. I, I want to throw him under the bus. I mean, I don't want to be green like that. I don't fuck no matter what. You know what I mean? Okay, but I already still, heard. Or maybe not, though. But, I mean, you, you don't have the ability to dictate here. He's already told me what happened, okay? I want to hear it from your side, from your perspective, because you probably know more than, than he does. For the first time, Nick has just heard that Gerald told Harnett something, rather than Harnett simply having information about Gerald. His partner violated the code of loyalty Nick has adhered to, and his rage at this betrayal immediately spills over. But for now, Nick manages to rein in his anger for the sake of his self-defense angle. Would you disagree? No, I wouldn't disagree. I apologize. I mean, okay. Let's not play games. I'm not trying to play games. I'm just... Okay. Like, for... So, you, you guys pull back there. And what's the guy's name? What do you call him? I call him Jojo. Okay, so Jojo walks up. Do you guys say anything? So, what's up, boy? I'm rolling down my window and he's acting all like... Fucking mm -hmm. weird. Mm -hmm. and reaching for shit. And I was like... Give me a favor. Stand up for me. Mm -hmm. And show me what he did that, that got you upset. He's all like... What was he wearing? Like pants and a shirt. What kind of shirt? Thin plaid, button up, and I'm not sure. What kind of shirt was it? I think jeans, brown. Okay. Did you did you see anything that was reaching for? No, but his dad has guns, and for a fact, his dad these are 45 laying around all the time. Okay. Did he pull money out? No, but he's told me he's gonna rob me and fucking do all that shit. Why would you go meet him there? Cause I don't want to worry about that shit. Okay, so you're gonna meet him there. He's gonna buy value from you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he reaches in his pants. Was it in his pocket or down like the front of his pants? Down the front of his pants. Okay. He Not like anything else. He put himself on. He was going like he was reaching when I did it. And so what'd you do? I was like, oh shit! Boom, 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 and he fell down like boom. So you shot him again when he's on the ground. Well, he hit again. Okay. Nick accounts for how many times he pulled the trigger, matching witness statements that three to four shots were fired. While this suggests he's being truthful, he's simultaneously shot his own self-defense claim in the foot. Okay, what happened after you shot him? Took off. Okay. Did you say anything to... I was like, my bad, my bad, my bad. Because he didn't know shit. He thought I was fixing to hit a lick. Okay. Did you ever see a weapon? No, but I've seen guns at the house. I've seen them with uh, weapons. I've seen them with knives. I've seen them with wrenches. You know, I've seen them with all kinds of things. But I didn't see nothing at that time. What it's were you going to sell him when, when he pulled up? Oh, when you Three. <clears throat> How much was that going to cost? Like six bucks. Six bucks. Did he have any money on him? Mm -hmm. I mean, he knew he was going to buy six dollars worth of value from you, right? Yeah, but why do you reach in the front of his pants? You get six bucks? Pockets, front. I don't know. I mean, I never seen him keep his, his dang money right how there. Quick, how quickly were you able to get the gun out of your pocket? Not too, no, not too, too quick. I just kind of like pulled it out, the hammer, I mean, it's kind of just chilling right here. Was the gun already out? Kind of partially. I mean, were you ready just in case something happened? Not like that, no. So you kept the gun? Did you reload it? Yeah. What'd you do with the empty casings? 
Throw them somewhere. Where? Where about some water? Get us on some water. Where was the water? Over off uh, all somewhere. Over off all, like the bay? Mm-hmm. Really by like Country Walk, so by right there. Where? Country Walk and so like that, by that little hood store. Did you still have the one of the truck? Yeah, or did you get out and go walk there? some water, I threw it in the water. Did you get out of the truck to do it? Mm-hmm. So you threw it from the window into some water, like was it like a pool, a retention pond, or was it just water on like the side of the or something. Okay, why'd you do that? Because I didn't want him in the truck, obviously. Why wouldn't you want him in the truck? Because, oh, hey, <coughs> you that, son. Oh, you got some brass right there on the ground. Well, I mean, what's wrong with having cases in your car? Mm, uh, there's probable cause. Nick may have a grip on legal terminology like probable cause, but he's not knowledgeable enough to realize he's poking holes in his own defense. Destroying evidence suggests an awareness that what he did was unjustified, which wouldn't make sense if Nick truly believed his life was in danger. When he threatened you, how long ago was that? What do you mean? He said that he's often said he was going to oh, kill you, right? Well, I didn't. I figured he used this one on his, like, on a crystal or something, acting all crazy. How long ago was that? Huh? How long ago was that? Like a week, three days ago. But then I talked to John, and John said, your brother's just being crazy. He's cool. And he's hit me up talking to me and shit. So he was texting you the stuff that he was going to do that to you? Yeah. And I mean, the other night, how many me, phones do you have? I have one. Okay. How many phones did he have? He calls from like a four something. The like number that. you were talking to him on uh -huh. when he was walking over, is that the same phone that he texted you his message to? Yeah. Do a boo 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 boo. I just need to really borrow a gun so I can hit a lick. I told him, dude, I'm fucking sick. I've been sick. Lately. So he has yeah. to borrow your gun so you can go rob somebody. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck yeah, are you talking about? But I'm talking about when he's threatening you. Yeah, he's talking about hitting, uh, hitting a lick on somebody. Him and his brother are going to go hit a lick on somebody. That's not you, though. He's yeah. asking for your help in that. Asking for my help on that, yeah. Okay, but what did he, what did he say when he threatened you? No, and I got pissed, and I was like, dude, I'm fucking sick, I'm sleeping, leave me the fuck alone, I hung up. But he called back in, I was like, hey, what's going on? He's like, man, I'll beat your fucking ass, blah, 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 blah. He looked at turn you into the fucking lick, and this, that, and the other. Harnett is usually on the ball, but he can't catch every blunder. Nick wants us to believe Joe was capable of resorting to armed violence, especially when it came to drugs. But if Joe had no access to guns without Nick's help, why was Nick so certain he was reaching for a weapon? Okay, but today it was all on track where he just wanted to buy some value from Yeah, he's straight with me sometimes and he's not. So today he was straight. Yeah. And he was going to buy $6 worth of value from you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he meets you over there because you wanted to meet him over there behind the corner store. Did he seem agitated when he walked up? No more than the base of Joe. Did he seem, when he was talking to you on the phone, did he seem okay? So like he was strung out, maybe nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. But I mean, did he? No, he didn't. Were he you didn't, guys beefing no. before you pulled up? No, we don't want to beef like that. The only way I was calling was like, why the fuck are you acting like this? And he told us about his wise and brother. That one just like, never getting in, no problems. So when you called up John later on, I called John, called John, John, called, quit fucking with that bullshit, blah blah blah. Why did you call John later on? See how he was doing. That was it. To see how who was doing. John was doing. I still wanted to hang out with John. Okay, I got a problem with John. He just shot his brother. Harnett is getting a picture of how cold Nick is and won't turn back to assuring Nick he's not a bad guy. Remorse isn't required to prove self-defense, but its absence gives Harnett reasons to keep questioning this story. The average person would be pretty shaken up if forced to shoot someone, especially when they have no history of gun violence. Nick has just taken a life for the first time, supposedly without planning or malice, then hit up his victim's brother to see if he's keen to hang out. I, I think you were calling him to find out if, if, if he knew anything about what happened between you and his brother. No, I freaking like two minutes ago, my, my buddy Tyler Woods, mom called me, he's like, where you at? And I was like, riding around, she's like, good girl, good, you didn't get you an alibi, hurry up. I was like, what the fuck? We talking about so trying to figure out what the fuck was going on and I called Tyler and Tyler was like, Yeah, they found Joe, he's dead or something like that. Well, you don't need to figure out what's going on, you know, because you shot him. Yeah. So you know he's dead. I'm assuming he is. You're assuming he's dead. Or he got shot in the head. I mean if you got shot in the head from that close, you ought to be fucking dead. So you shot him in the head? I'm assuming that's what I was told, yeah. I don't know where I got ahead of him. You want to pull the trigger right off. The only thing I remember was him here, 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 and he fell and I don't know, hit the concrete. And it made a spark, or it went through his head and made a spark. How many times did you pull the trigger? Five. 
five. All right, stupid bird, stand up for me. Actually, stay where you're at. Point the gun at me like you pointed the gun at him. How far away was he? Mm, the front of my hood, about right, a little bit farther back. Further away? Back your chair up, if, if that helps. That's about distance. Okay, so show me what you did. He went boom, he kind of buckled down. So he buckled down. And he kind of like went like this again. Okay, then what would you I do? Boom, shot his ass in the shoulder, he went back up. So he went back up. Boom, boom, and he fell, and then just like that, boom. Okay, so when he fell, was he like on his hands and knees? He was going to his hands. He was going to his hands and knees, yeah. And then he fell. I think he fell. So you could see his hands when he was going down. Yeah, but he still was like this. I mean, come on now. Look, I'm facing fucking life in prison now. Does he owe you money? No. He isn't like welched on other times when he popped up from you. Yeah, but it's bullshit, petty dope shit, and his brother's taking care of him. He used to go to his brother's house and eat and shit. How much, how much does he owe you for dope? Nothing for dope. Was he, he stole you? fucking money out of my wallet. Joe did? Yeah. How much money did you steal from me? For like 40, 60 bucks. How long ago was that? If, like when I first started hanging out with Joe, and then Joe went to jail for that bullshit. And stuff like that. How long ago was it they stole money from me? A while ago. It was all squashed. Yeah, but what's a while ago? Two weeks ago? Right after you got out of jail, he squashed it. How long ago was it? I don't know, dude. I don't a know. Month, like, a year? It's, it's been some spots for a while. Like, I had no problem with him, and he just started acting all squirrely, like I got him getting on back on heroin or something. Is this what you were wearing when that all happened? Yeah. Okay. You didn't change clothes or nothing? Mm-hmm. What were y'all doing while, after the shooting, what did you do? Went to his house. Went to Gerald's house. Mm-hmm. Why'd you go back to your house? Get some stuff. I was gonna go hunting. I'm gonna go out and shoot tomorrow. You're gonna go hunting. Not hunting, shooting. What I mean, you said hunting? I, I, I messed up because we go hunting and shoot. Hunting and fishing camp. But that's not where I was going. You're gonna go out there? No, well, that's either one of that place. I was gonna go to like, was a Vortec or whatever. Do you have any Dark. rifles that you brought with you? Huh? Do you have any rifles in the truck? Yeah, there's a suitcase in the back. So I told the officer. What's in the suitcase? Um, M14, AR-15, 12-gauge. This is the same suitcase Gerald spotted in the truck, and now Harnett learns Nick planned to take it to a shooting range near Vortex Spring. This seems like a crude killing of two birds with one stone, explaining away the guns in Nick's truck and getting him out of town in the shooting's aftermath. Calling out the getaway plan feels like a waste of Harnett's abilities at this point. It seems more like you were just kind of going to try and get out of town because of what happened to me. Where would I go to? My hunting camp, right out there, I don't know. I don't know about a duck out of nowhere. I mean, well, why not? Because I don't have nowhere to go. I don't have no income. Okay, but the thing is, this is that you didn't come in here and go, hey, I got involved in some serious shit. Here's what happened, right? Mm-hmm. You were going to get out of town and go to a, a shooting place and hang out there for how long? Right so after a couple of days. Right after you killed somebody. Until when? Until I come back. Okay, I'm just saying. I mean, the thing is, this is clearly. Two, no, no. Here's, here's, here's my point. Here's I don't know. I see my, everything. Here's my point. My point is this: is that you came in here with the understanding that you weren't going to tell us that you shot and killed Joseph. I get that. And that your reason for having all the guns was because you were going to go to a shooting camp. I wasn't. We're shoot. past that. I wasn't going to shoot Okay, there. but you were leaving town. I was leaving town. Oh, yeah, I ran. I was because of the fact that you got involved in a shooting. That's not why I was leaving town, though. I was leaving town to go shoot some firearms. As Hunnett's voice grows louder and higher pitched, Nick matches, and this provocation is no accident. The last time things reached a fever pitch, Hunnett earned the admission that Nick pulled the trigger. His suspect has a short temper and a brittle ego, so Harnett will push and prod until Nick blurts out his own undoing. You did it in town. Why do you need to leave town to do that? Because if I shoot off over 120, uh, 223 rounds, SWAT team will be on me. You can get that for firing off 538 rounds, too. I wouldn't SWAT team, I didn't see. It could have been, could have been. I'm not trying to be a smart ass officer, I apologize. I don't know, I swarmed me. Man, you don't need to borrow two two three to get that sort of reaction. Three, it'll do just fine. I'm not trying to be smart ass either. I mean, to be honest, I like to practice my guns. I haven't done it in a while. I like to practice. 
I mean, I was an NRA members, member, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Did you make any mistakes tonight? Make like, any bad decisions? Like as what? In regards to what happened? Between you and Joe? I mean, probably the best thing I shot him what I did, but what if he would have shot me? His dad's got guns. Okay. And I would have been like, I'm looking for Joseph so and so, and you'd be like, well, I don't know who he is, where is he at? He done hit bone off somewhere. But he didn't shoot you. He could have. Did you see a gun? No, but he was reaching. It's a drug deal. He's supposed to give you something. I never seen I never seen a junkie or nobody like that keep money in their pants right here. Okay, well he had no gun. I didn't know that. I knew. He's got no gun. So I mean I'm trying to understand why is it you shot him? He approached me. Gerald says because you owe because he owes you money. I'm not saying that. I know that, but he don't owe me no money. He's saying that. He also saying that Joe didn't do nothing. He just walked up and you shot his ass. Harnett has asked plenty of questions clarifying Nick's self-defense claim, but this is the first time he's challenged it outright. But Nick isn't ready to give up on his story, so Harnett pokes at the pressure points he's picked up on. Where Gerald feared losing his new home and upcoming wedding, Nick's pride is sensitive to his income and his partner's snitching. The way I felt was it was him or me. I mean, I thought he was reaching for something. Yeah, but your pal was the other ones. So they got to do nothing. Right. Maybe you don't like Joe. Joe's, Joe's threatened you before, though, right? <laughs> Joe's a bitch. So that, it, it, it wasn't nothing like that. I felt threatened. I did it. Simple as that. <coughs> no, it's said. not as simple as that because he says otherwise. Well, I felt threatened. I understand you. I'm not going to sit there and tell you a lie and be like, yeah, he walked up and I... He did him. tell me a lie, though, when you first walked in the room. You sat down. Yeah, I lied. I don't want to admit that. lied. So why should I choose to believe anything that you say? You don't have to. Exactly. And you're not very convincing. I want to understand what happened. Okay? And when I hear the truth, I'll know it. I tend to believe Daryl, and I'm not, it's not condemning you. It doesn't really change the outcome. Okay? You shot a guy that was coming over to do a drug transaction with you. You're not a cop responding to uh, something and feels threatened because of a bad guy. You're the bad guy in this scenario. You're the drug dealer with a gun, with three guns. You're the bad guy here. Not Joe. Now, why did you choose to shoot him? I said I felt threatened. I wouldn't have done it. He's going down, and you shoot him again. Pow, 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 pow. To make sure you were dead. I started off the wrong foot with you, man. I'm not trying to be rude. I apologize. I'm just, you know. You understand that it's bad to sell drugs. Yeah, but do you you're not a yeah. police officer. You're not out a victim of circumstance. You're not a victim of circumstance. You're not some guy minding his own business, being an honest business owner or policeman or whatever. You're the bad guy. You're a drug dealer. You're an armed drug dealer. You ain't something like all I do is sit there and flip my script. Yes, I take them, but I needed that extra little bit of money. Okay, you're a drug dealer. What do you call it? Mm, it's the same thing, but I just don't like the way it sounds, you know what I mean? I want the word to find it. Am I? Sir? How would you define it? How would you classify yourself? A I pharmaceutical think... entrepreneur? That's a fancy word. I mean, you correct it right there, but man, I live off six hundred dollars fifty six six something oh, a month. Okay, they gave me forty. I mean, they gave me fifty four dollars for fucking food stamps. What the fuck is that going to feed somebody? It's not. But I guarantee that if somebody owes me forty bucks, I'm going to get that forty bucks from them. Harnett delivers a satisfying breakdown of Nick's logic, but like all the evidence we've heard so far, it's circumstantial, not irrefutable. 
For all we know, Nick did fear for his life, and while authorities have surveillance footage of the service station they stopped at, they have nothing from the crime scene itself. But Harnett has only revealed to Gerald where the footage is from, not Nick. So he decides to take a stab at a risky bluff. Understand this. I hear you talking about him reaching in his waistband. Okay? And what I'm trying to get to with you is this, is that I don't see him doing that when I replay it. Okay, why don't you ask his older brother why they pissed with the shit out of somebody no, no, and robbed them? No, no, no. With the gun that's sitting on the thing where they've got cracked. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that that didn't happen. What I'm saying is, is that in the video I can see his hand. So I'm guessing that thing had the whole video around the whole camera? Around the whole story? I can see his hand. From where I parked? I'm not, it's not, I'm not making, I'm not, I'm not telling you there's video everywhere because there's not. I can see his hand. He put his phone in the pocket and he went like this. That's all I remember. It happened quick. Okay? His I hear you. Stick. I can see his hand. The entire time I can see his hand. I don't see it going into his waistband. Or is there something else in the truth that explains why this happened? Because reaching into his waistband, that didn't happen. I'm sorry, it didn't happen. I don't know if I can tell you that can make the situation any better that makes it that... Do you that think a lie okay does? Do. Does a lie make this better? Does a lie make this... A lie don't make nothing better because all you do is cover up a lie with a lie. Yeah, so I mean, and that's what you're doing. And I understand that. I, this, you're not the first person to be in this situation. Oh, no, I'm not. But the thing is, is, that, is that we both know that that's not true. I can see it and you know it because you were there. Okay? So what was going through your head when you decided to shoot him? No, it was just my service ass. That was it. So why did you do that? He fucking act sketchy. That was it. He what was he something. doing to do it was sketchy? He looked around and he was like, and he reached. That was it. Okay. Nick's resolve is crumbling. His self-defense excuse has been reduced to Joe merely looking sketchy. Harnett escalates his charade with a biting tone that could rile Nick up to his breaking point. He reached. He went down for his pants. I can see his hand. It doesn't go down his pants. Was it a right or left hand? I don't freaking know. I don't remember. Everything happened really, really quick. Yeah, but if I don't see his hands going into his pants... It just means that you're being dishonest. You're saying something that you've seen on TV. What do you mean? To so try and slant this one way or the other, but oh I yeah, see this that. is self-defense. Blah blah. He's yeah. selling drugs. He shot him. But no, they don't work that way. No, I'm fucked. I know that. I'm not stupid. It's how fucked are you? Um, probably Big Bubba's bitch or does, somewhere. Does lying help you? Lying don't do me shit. Then stop it. Why did you do what you did? I mean, honestly, you said you weren't gonna bullshit. Don't bullshit. What, the truth? Yes. Motherfucker's a bitch, okay? That's straight up honesty. Motherfucker's a bitch, okay? He fucking deserved it. If I wouldn't have done it, somebody else would have fucking did it. Why did he deserve it? He's a robbing motherfucker. He likes to break people's jobs. He wants to rob the motherfucking plug. He wants to come threaten my ass, tell me he's gonna fuck me over, kick down my door, fuck me up when I'm sleeping. He got shit fucked up. There's real fuckers in this street. You wanna fucking play? You don't come threatening my ass with a fucking knife from your goddamn house. And I'll pull a gun out of you. Shoot me, motherfucker, shoot me. Fuck you. Don't play with me. When did that happen? A while back. That's a, this fucking. This, it wasn't no fucking premeditated or nothing. It's fucking spread. So and that day, I called him up. I said, You need something? He said, Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. Went around the corner. I said, Alright, I burned his fucking ass. This is dead almost honest. I burned his fucking ass. He reached for shit, nothing. I shot the motherfucker, saw his face. He made a ugh noise and I shot the bitch in the fucking head. Because I'm a real motherfucker, that's why. Okay? Yeah. Don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with mine. That's it. He had no reason to treat me the way he did. How long ago was that that he did that to you? A while back. He's been calling me, threatening me, threatening me to come to my house, beat my <coughs> shit up. Fuck it, I'm fucked anyway, so what does it matter? What did Gerald know? Gerald didn't know shit. Gerald thought I was hitting a fucking lick and I blasted the bitch and he fucking ran off. He looked at me and was like, I can't believe you fucking did that. I said, real motherfuckers don't play around here. 
He's like, a white boy just did that. So I don't know, Rose White Boy, you're gonna fucking know. Harnett has hit the jackpot. To keep Nick spewing information that will seal his conviction in court, Harnett feeds into the gangster posturing, acting amused by his suspect's violence. Yeah, he would treat me right. What was he doing to you? Hit me legs, so uh, don't give my money back or whatever, or I give him, say some money, and they don't give him my change. Oh, well, I'll get the plug the wrong chain, this, that, and other. I mean, come on now. Every house got shut up because he punched the H dealers, fuck you, know H is, don't you? Punched the H dealers in the mouth, broke his jaw, knocked him out. And like a week or two later, Joe did? Yes! Knocked that motherfucker out! He's tiny! Well, him and um, Christian Haley's, the one that got arrested for meth or whatever. <laughs> You know, that no, I mean, but did you tell anybody that you were going to do this to jail? No, fuck no. Nobody knew about that shit. Okay. I mean, you had to see this was eventually going to happen, though, right? Yeah, but I told you, he's a fucking little bitch and he deserved it. I go to hell for doing it. There's one left fucking little junkie motherfucker on the street. So then you cross that line, you're like, fucking damn consequences be damned, you need to do this. Yeah, you damn right. And I made sure that's fucking dead because no dead man tells no fucking tell. I fucked up because I used my truck and a motherfucking camera. And then you brought somebody with you. Go fuck my guy. It was my real <laughs> Me and him did my own shit, but that's between me and him. And that motherfucker shouldn't have talked. And to me, I had streets take care of that shit too. You can bliss believe that one. You mean like you're mad at him? If you're gonna snitch on me, he's gonna get his, the uh, fucking word to get around. Well, shit didn't get in trouble with him and he rode with him? What the fuck? <laughs> Come on now, people he roll with. Fuck a warrant and trade up. He had no idea you were gonna do this. Don't matter, he still snitched on my ass. Street, don't play that away. Nick's dedication to protecting Gerald wouldn't survive his trial. His defense fought a first degree murder charge with claims Nick gave a false confession to cover up for Gerald, the true killer. But after helping police locate the discarded shell casings, Gerald ultimately walked away without facing any charges of his own. Nick, on the other hand, was convicted on June 30th, 2016, receiving a mandatory life sentence. Joseph Ross's family will never again hear their brother play his guitar or see their son realize his ambitions to study journalism. There's some small comfort in the fact justice was served and his killer will never again take breath as a free man.